Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Light Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do my fourth video in my series Slacken & Co. From the Vault, Harry Bring Them Back. So if you watch the first three videos, you know exactly what this is. If you haven't, go back and check those out. So essentially what is happening or what we hope in the candle community is happening. Um, we've got these hints and teasers from Harry Slatkin of Slatkin & Co. fame, uh, Bath & Body Works and Homeworks and Scentworks and various brands uh, uh, over the years that he is potentially relaunching um, a high-end line within Slatkin & Co. So Slatkin & Co. was formed in the early 90s, partnered with Bath & Body Works in the early to, th early to mid 2000s. That partnership ended, I think about 10 years ago. He launched a few other things along the way, big hits with Homeworks and Scentworks and Aroma Home, and then regained control or, or ownership of the name Slatkin & Co., which was the original fragrance house that he developed and launched um, alongside his partners and his wife, Laura uh, Slatkin of now Nest, uh, New York. And so the idea is, the, the hints and teasers are that maybe Slatkin & Co. will be relaunching, in my mind, hoping that it is sort of the the top collection or the, the most high-end luxury within the various brands that he has within Slack & Co. And uh, Homeworks has turned into Homeworks by Slack & Co. instead of just Homeworks by Harry Slatkin. A subtle yet significant difference. And so uh, last summer, he posted on Instagram saying, you know, what are some of everyone's favorite scents from back in the Slack & Co. era, either, you know, pre-BBW or the Slack & Co. that we, most of us, um, became most familiar with Harry uh, and his nose within with the partnership with Bath & Body Works that lasted for many years. And so I thought, well, I've got a lot of, <laughs> you know, candles in my personal vault, if you want to call it that, um, and a love of so many of these blends and would love to see them not necessarily, you know, bring them back just a straight, you know, duplicate repackage um, relaunch, but really a reimagining, um, especially as we've already seen the level of craftsmanship and artistry um, and science that we get from Homeworks has been fantastic. So, you know, imagining that Harry relaunches some Slack & Co classics, potentially even as a higher and more luxury version, um, a reimagining of some of these scents could be truly next level and beyond. So super excited about that. So today is one uh, highly anticipated video, at least by myself. <laughs> Hopefully others are anticipating it as well. And but that is because we're getting into the fall slash autumn scents, which for many people, certainly I'd say almost the, ca the casual candle consumer, but even for folks, you know, who are the year round burners or melters, fall really is the, you know, it's such a huge season that everyone look looks forward to and gets excited about. And there are so many incredible scents there um, that this is one that I, I was super excited to dig into the vault to see, okay, what, what do I really want to see reimagined or relaunched? So, so I chose 16 scents. However, I will I actually am sniffing and doing sort of in-depth on 13 of the scents. Um, and I'll say there are a couple caveats here. So three that I'm not doing um, primarily are because Bath & Body Works continued to release those to this day, um, even after the Slack & Co. partnership ended with Bath & Body Works. And then five, I'd say about four of the remaining 13 um, are fragrances that Bath & Body Works does tend to bring back pretty regularly from the Slack & Co. era. But... I actually think that they don't do it as well as they used to. Um, and so because of that, it's really not coming through as like the original Slack & Co version. So I would love to see uh, Harry and team reimagine those with the Slack & Co launch. So with that said, I'll just say right at the top, so some of the super popular ones that you may be expecting to see here, um, there are three that, that I don't have here are not officially on my list um, because Bath & Body Works does bring them back every year. Um, they're pretty close to original form. Certainly, Harry has sort of elevated and reimagined some of these and could do these and do them wonderfully well, which is why I'll mention them, uh, but they're not sort of in my in-depth, you know, please must bring them back uh, list. And that is, of course, Leaves, big, big classic. Many people's first introduction to Slack & Co. was through the Leaves candle, which has remained you know, incredibly popular over the decades, really. Then, of course, Autumn, which, you know, at some point, probably this fall, I'll do an in-depth sniff and review of Autumn because I actually like it more than Leaves. It's one of my top autumn scents in general. I think it's a beautiful transitional from uh, summer into autumn. Just really love it and kind of a sister scent too. It goes like autumn into sweater weather into holly wreath. Really this like perfect transition of, of sister scents for me. Um, and then finally Cider Lane. So Cider Lane launched the last year of the Slack & Co. BBW partnership. Um, and BBW tends to bring it back most years. Sometimes they skip it. Sometimes it's an online exclusive. It's an incredible scent when done well. Um, really that that green apple dipped into like a caramel or caramel thick uh, sauce. 
But really excited to dig into the 13 that I do have here to talk through. There's some really incredible ones. I'm gonna go through kind of three categories here. First one being primarily bakery, then into the true conceptuals, some of the outdoorsy ones, and then sort of mixed collection that is a little bit kind of like towing the line between is it gourmand, is it conceptual, is it bakery? And you'll see what I mean when I get to, to that final four with some of my literally all time favorite scents from Slack & Co. So first up, this is uh, the, one of the ones that BBW sometimes brings back, but doesn't do it as well as they used to. And that is the, the big thing, whereas Leaves, Autumn, Cider Lane primarily comes back close to original form. This one and a few others that are here do come back. You'll certainly recognize them, probably purchased in the past couple of years, but they just are missing something when I smell the new Bath & Body Works ones compared to some of these original launches. So first one being Cinnamon Sugared Donut. This is from the 2012 collection. The Cinnamon Sugared Donut, to my knowledge, first appeared um, in the 2011 collection, maybe even 2010. But Cinnamon Sugared Donut, um, this, I will talk a little bit about the art direction. So the 2012, I like the 2012 as the big photo labels. There were, you know, multiple collections. This is when they really started going out into different collections as far as the art direction goes. Um, but there was a large group of the 2012 launch um, that had this big sort of somewhat semi-traditional um, photo um, imagery, but then this kind of like aerial black font on top. Didn't, I, I think it was kind of uh, polarizing. I'm, I'm pretty sure Kent of the Candle Channel was not a fan of this uh, as a graphic designer. And as, if you've seen his things, you'll understand why. Um, but the one thing I will say about this collection or, or this design is when the candle is lit, because this is sort of like a translucent uh, lettering, it's it's not fully white. It's like a little bit of, you know, the, the opacity is lowered you do sort of, it disappears a little bit. And so when the, the flame and the candle shining through, you see more of the photo than just the words, but still not the most, you know, beautiful looking. Um, and they could have chosen a better photo as well. Anyhow, to get into the scent, uh, this one is share the delight with a homemade vanilla cake donut covered in sugar crystals and crushed cinnamon. The thing that's amazing about this, and this again, sort of comes back sometimes or new names or relaunches at BBW, but never quite as good as this is it's like it is really that cinnamon sugar donut on, you know, you're at an apple orchard, you're doing your, you know, cheesy generic, but fun, you know, pumpkin hay rides, apple picking, all that kind of stuff. And it, this, this, you smell that vanilla cake donut, you smell the oil, not in a bad way, but you smell the oil that it just came out of, and then it is rolling in that cinnamon sugar and it's just sticking to it. And it's crystallized, it's so authentic, like a Ceylon cinnamon, making it really soft, not just like a bright, hot, like, you know, um, red hot kind of cinnamon at all. It's just such a beautiful expression of cinnamon and donut. So incredible, would love to see this one reimagined. We kind of seen it with the sugared beignets with Homeworks and the hot cider donut, very similar to this, um, but I'll never say no to an incredible cinnamon sugar donut reimagining. Next up, Boy, oh boy, I think everyone's expecting this one, Apple Crumble. This first launched, I wanna say in 2010, uh, it was like Apple Crumble and they brought it out alongside homemade cookies and oatmeal raisin cookie and like mint chocolate at the time. It was kind of a, a fall bakery that came out back in 2010 and they certainly in 2011 and 12. And then Apple Crumble only came out one other time for a semi-annual sale in like 2014 and then never again, which is honestly a travesty. I will say that Homework's Spiced Apple Crumb is a close reimagining to Apple Crumble, but this is one that give me a straight up dupe or, or, or heighten it or really make it, you know, next level and give me a, something that's very similar to this because it's just out of this world. I, I will say too, I love the waxiness. It was always this kind of green because it is very much a green apple. The notes on it, the perfect way to chase away an autumn chill, baked Granny Smith and Macintosh apples topped with vanilla crumble. Oh, it is so, it's fresh. It's a different kind of apple. It is green Granny Smith. This is a Macintosh, so it's not super, super tart. There's a sweetness to it. Uh, baked with vanilla crumble. The bakery you get in there, I suppose is sort of like the streusel or crumb cake where it's just like you take a handful of brown sugar, some butter, some flour, probably some cinnamon. They don't mention here, but there's probably a little bit of cinnamon in there, a bit. Um, maybe a dash of nutmeg, a little bit of vanilla, um, and then you could almost do like some maybe dried oats or something in the crumble and you have your apples and you put the you know, you crumble this in like little pea-sized chunks on top and you bake it. That is exactly what it smells like. And again, so authentic. There's nothing artificial about the apple, about the baked good. And it's not generic. It, it's not like 
at Bath and Body Works now you see if they do a bakery fall, it's like, okay, well clearly they're working with a mix of this and this because that's what the you know marketing, the demographics, the sales numbers are telling them that people like this type of bakery. So we're gonna put that exact type of ba bakery and a cranberry version and an apple version. No, this is its own standalone scent that does not smell really like any of these others, even apple bakery items, which you'll see coming up, completely different because it is a standalone built on its own scent from you know top, middle, bottom notes. Oh, just really, really love that one. Then we move on to, well, this was, and maybe still is, a unicorn candle. So there was a test collection of five candles that came out in fall 2012. Uh, it included farm apple cookie, blueberry pumpkin patch, toffee glazed popcorn, chocolate bacon cupcake, and roasted pumpkin butter. You'll see some of those do appear in here. Um, a few of those went wide, mm, some of them did not and most of them haven't seen the light of day for many, many years. Chocolate bacon cupcake. This was during the, you know, again, 2012, the trend in, you know, bakeries was to, you know, bacon and everything. Oh my gosh, you're putting bakery on top of a donut. You're out of this world, voodoo donuts. You're crazy. I can't believe you're doing this. All these bakeries, big deal. I think it's kind of become a little bit passe. It's like, okay, great. It makes sense that a salty, savory, you know, smoked, flavoring would go well in, in baked goods as well. So you really counter the sweet with the salty with, you know, salt, sugar, and fat, right? But I will say this was done really well. First of all, chocolate is hard to do in wax. Bacon, you usually don't want in wax. I think it was a Yankee Candle bacon scent that was just gross. Um, but this really works and it did not go wide. Notes on this one, savory farmhouse bacon meets dark cocoa, creamy buttermilk, and rich caramel in this uncommonly delicious combination of sweet and salty scents. Now, why this works and why I would say bring it back, even though like the like cultural significance of that is kind of like, oh my God, bacons. And then it was, oh my God, unicorns for a while. Not eating unicorns, but you know what I'm saying? Like where everything mass market has like the same sort of trends on it. Chocolate bacon cupcake, certainly his time has come and gone, but the fragrance is so off. Maybe it's something that I, a chocolate bacon cupcake, I could take it or leave it. I've had them before. I wouldn't seek, it, seek them out. But the authenticity is what's so impressive with this. It starts with that salt. And I, you know what it reminds me of actually? There was, um, I think it was a bacon uh, chocolate bar in New York City. There was Vosges Chocolate actually, which is in New York. And I think it's probably nationwide. Um, in mid 2000s launched a bacon chocolate bar that reminds me of this in the sense that Primarily getting a little bit of the savoriness, a little bit of the smokiness, the salt for sure. Uh, it's not so much meaty, it's not like jerky, it's not, over, but it's not overly smoked like fake wood chips. But it really is sort of like a, an applewood smoked bacon, some sea salt and that bittersweet or dark chocolate. So it's not your sweet, overly sugary milk chocolate. The cupcake, mm, I'd say it's more like bacon chocolate because it's dark cocoa, you don't get so much the baked good item of it, um, but certainly a gourmand, even though it was chocolate bacon, it's really interesting. And more than anything, I'd be interested to see how they could reimagine, relaunch this, what the marketing or branding would be, if they would go straight up, you know, chocolate bacon, or if they would bring something else into the mix um, for, you know, 2022 and beyond, but would love to see what they would do with that if given another chance. Then we go to one that you don't, I don't really hear much about, same test collection. This one failed, I believe. Farm Apple Cookie. Again, really love some of the the like true to life, still life bake shops um, or confectionaries um, imagery that they used for these candles. Farm Apple Cookie was the enticing aroma of a treat still warm from the farmhouse oven, sugar cookie with cinnamon and tender red apple, nutmeg and creamy vanilla. So you think of cookie, like what is a farm apple cookie, right? Let me show you that. It's so different, it's so good. It is, think of almost like a snickerdoodle. Um, it's like a sugar cookie with some cinnamon, right? That's your cinnamon, your nutmeg, some vanilla, absolutely. With just a little bit of like, they say tender red apple and that's exactly it. So it's, it's almost like if you diced the apple, kept the skin on it, and like put it into the batter of like a snickerdoodle or something, you just bite into it and these are these little tiny pieces, these soft little nibblings of a tender apple, but really you almost smell like the redness of the apple skin, the soft, sweet, not overly sugary, not overly buttery, not a butter cookie, not, you know, your traditional rolled out sort of cutout cookies, a little bit of vanilla bean and just a sweet, fresh 
apple. Really incredible. I would say there's a tiny hint of something almost mildly perfumey in here. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but it's 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 something in the apple note, but it still leans very much foody with that apple. There's just something else, almost like a blossom or something in the background, perhaps. But it's very, very, very mild. Just enough to make it something other than plain apple that you see in many items. And different than the apple, it's an apple crumble. So those are my primarily the bakeries. There's one more that it would be considered, I suppose, a bakery. I only have it in a little four ounce right here, but that is Blueberry Pumpkin Patch. Um, I love this original packaging. Again, it failed in this test scent packaging. It came out in 2013 in the bright blue wax in like the pumpkin collection. Um, and then I don't think came back again, maybe one other time since then. Um, blueberry Pumpkin Patch, harvest the inviting scent of autumn's pumpkins, perfectly ripened blueberries and vanilla praline. Now, vanilla praline, we hear praline a lot. It's a lot of names and notes and things, but a praline is basically a cooked mixture um, of sugar, nuts, and vanilla, sometimes ground as a paste, but so almost like caramelized. So any kind of nuts with sugar and vanilla is a praline. So that's sort of what this is. You're going to get a little bit of nuttiness, a little bit of that almost caramel, caramelization at least, with some pumpkins and some blueberries. And this is just so, it's so nice. It's super fresh. Some people I think may have said this is almost like a Pop-Tart blueberry. And I could see like that blueberry filling, um, really concentrated flavoring. I could see someone saying that, like not like a gloopy blueberry pie um, from a diner um, or like hand pies, but more so like the concentrated, almost like a blueberry jam in a sense. I would like, a, I could see it that. If you've ever purchased the Bon Maman uh, wild blueberry preserves, kind of like that, like a really intensified blueberry. It almost reminds me a little bit of the berries and cream candle that I talked about in the berry trifle from Slatkin 2011, maybe at BBW. I think that could be the base of this because that was uh, like a caramel, almost a praline with berries and cream. This adds, kind of turns up the notch adds in some of the, a little bit of like the, maybe some spices in there, just a little bit. Um, and autumn pumpkins, which of course can be a little bit of the gourd, but it's kind of like the, it's like a softer, kind of the pumpkin flesh, more towards like a pumpkin patch, pumpkin carvings, which we'll get to in a little bit. But it really, it works. It's, it's for the people who love the fresh fruity, this is a fresh fruity fall. So really love blueberry pumpkin patch. Would love to see a, a you know, a reimagining of this. I think that'd be incredible. All right. We're, we're going through this, it's gonna be a long one, as you can probably see, <laughs> already going through this, it's gonna be a long one. Next, we're moving into four that I'm really excited about. A couple of them you'll be familiar with, a couple you probably won't be. Um, they're all sort of conceptual. They're outdoors, they've got some fruit, they've got some botanicals in them, uh, but they're not your typical, you know, your bakery or your edibles. So, first up, Slacken & Co. Cranberry Woods. Now, I loved this label. This first launched in 29 or 2010. Um, with just this deep, you know, maroon forest sunset in like, you know, the mountains with this deep cranberry wax, beautiful, beautiful imagery. This is one of those, a handful of those that I was gonna mention. BBW continues to bring this out almost every year, but at some point along the way, they completely changed the formulation and now it's just like a sweetened cranberry juice with a little bit of spice in it. And it's like a poor imitation of the Slacken & Co. Cranberry Woods. Uh, the notes on it, and this is, spot on, a mysterious blend of cranberry, rich black currant, and raspberry, with notes of cinnamon bark, cedarwood, and warm amber. Sniffing this. Oh, it is so rich. The, it is, it's almost like the smoldering woods a little bit, which I suppose that's your cedarwood, the amber making it warm. Amber sometimes can lean just very heavy and more like perfume body fragrance. It works here. It's kind of resinous, it's kind of warm, almost like your frankincense and your your amber's almost sort of like a patchouli incense, but not that dry, more rich and warm and resinous. The berries are there, they're a dark, deep berry. Not really edible as far as like a cooked berry or, or sweet berry. Um, it really is just like the depth of black currant and cranberry. Um, raspberry, I don't really get that specifically, but I trust that it's part of the mix of the berries. And it's almost leans towards like there could be a bit of a juniper or some sort of you know forest berry in there as well that's not very super strong on here. The cinnamon bark and the cedar wood, it's not your red hot cinnamon. Most people wouldn't be able to pick out a cinnamon in here. It really is just like a bit of of just like the raw cinnamon to it versus a red hot or you know a cooked cinnamon or, or something like that. 
The cedar is nice, it's dark. Again, it really, to me, it's almost toward like your the, the ember of, of woods that you get in um, like a crackling fireside or in a marshmallow fireside, for instance. Almost like an ember, a smoked ember. Leans almost to get into that smoky, leathery territory, but stops before there because, again, it is amber. It's not your patchouli, or your incense, or anything beyond the cedar wood. It's not a super dry, choke you out like oak or something like that. But it's deep, it's dark, it's intense. It's, as they say, a mysterious blend. This is, I can see that this isn't, wouldn't be for everyone. And you hear cranberry and it's like, oh, it's bright, it must be fruity. And you smell like, oh gosh, what is that? Because people are expecting, you know, again, ocean spray, candles, is what, what, you know, the general public seems to want. And so Bath and certainly tweaked it. And I'm not big on people saying, oh, well, they tweaked it or it's, oh, you know, batch variation or oil, different blends. I'm not huge on that. But for sure, some sense over the years, they've have they've evolved either out of marketing or cheapening of blends or the materials. And this is one where they, they did change the Bath and Works. So I'd love to see Harry's team bring back this dark, rich, again, it's fruity, but it's woods. I love fruit and woods. There's also a woodland berry that I almost threw into this mix that was great. Um, anything that's that deep, rich, non-edible berry. Again, throw in some oud, throw in some surprising notes like your saffrons or your frankincense, all that, so interesting in here. Then we move on to 2011 release, and it came out a few times, and then not for a long time, and then just came back this year, actually, at Bath & Body Works, Acorn and Fig. Full on conceptual, what is, well, we know what fig smell like, but what does an acorn smell like? That's that's your, <laughs> the conceptual words putting you into fall. This came back, I believe the next year in 2012 and maybe in 13 as Autumn Day, never saw it again. And then in 2021, Bath & Body Works released it, similar colored wax as Autumn Day. I stocked up because I love it and it was almost as good. It was pretty close to this, um, but I would love to see, again, a relaunching and reimagining of acorn and fig with you know a new eye or new noses on it. The notes on this one, a medley of fresh apricot, juicy pear and fig blended with fresh cut birchwood and creamy sandalwood. So again, these are really, you could call these fruity fruits and woods mixed together to create these conceptual blends. Um, apricot almost leans creamy toward me and it's fresh apricot, not dried apricot, but it's, you know, it's a stone fruit, but it's not the bright juiciness of peach. It's got more depth to it. Um, the pear, certainly uh, autumnal, got a Bartlett pear or something like that, that's right up that alley. Fig can lean green or can lean a little bit powdery, depending, you know, is it fresh fig? Is it dried fig? Is it the fig leaves? Like this almost looks like it could be a fig leaf on here, but fig in almost any form is really, I really, really like. Then birch or birchwood can sometimes be like sweet, sharp, invigorating, almost, it can lean almost towards like your wintergreen or minty scents, uh, but that it more so just brings like a freshness to the wood, not, you know, straight up mint by any means. Um, fresh cut birch wood though, you're gonna get a little bit of that, um, like birch beer, if you've ever had, and then your creamy sandalwood. So it's not necessarily as dry as sometimes sandalwood can be, or again, toward your powdery oaks, but you've got that rich depth, warmth of the creamy sandalwood. It is powdery, which I think comes a bit from maybe a bit of the birch wood, but primarily I think some of the fig almost leans towards that powdery, but not, when I say powdery, don't think Japanese cherry blossom powder. It's, or grandma powder. It's, it's, it's a good, it's an, it's an appreciated powder in here. Um, the, the apricot, the fig being your fresh side of this, throw in your birchwood and your sandalwood. And it just is this balance of really, this is sort of like, you know, a mid fall walk through the forest. So it's not a, you know, a walk through the park, like your autumn might be, or your leaves might be. This is like, you're walking through the forest, <laughs> walking through the forest floor, um, and you're getting the dried out depth of that sandalwood with fruit that could lean dry, like figs and apricots are both eaten dried oftentimes, um, but these are the fresh interpretations of them. And it just makes it where it's so conceptual, it's hard to pick out anything blind on this other than maybe the fig, if you know what fig smells like in perfumery. Um, Cause it's not like, don't think fig like your fig Newton, like your baked figs or even like fig preserves. It's a different type of like, like greener, fresher fig. Love, acorn fig, autumn day, whatever you want to call it. Then we go into a failed test scent. If I remember correctly, I think this was a bit of like a fan favorite and folks were hoping it would go wide and it didn't. Um, and it really never saw again the light of day again. Cranberry Harvest, and this is just a picture of sort of generic background with, you know, mums and 
some you know day at the, the the pumpkin patch notes were bright and crisp as a sunny fall day the perfect autumn blend of fresh cranberries apple peel and clove well boy this is so nice and i really like it because it is like it's it's apple peel and almost fresh cranberries because it's not sweet and it's not cranberry sauce it is not you know your frosted cranberry it is not really even the cranberry from cranberry woods it is bright fresh tart cranberries uh, like you just like have a bag of them and maybe you're just starting to mash them up. So it's almost like very tannic like wine would be like a like a Cabernet Sauvignon or something would be. The apple peel, uh, it, I get that because again, it's almost like tannic in a way because it is the, the peel of the apple. It's not fruity, sweet, fresh, the meat of it, but you still get the sense of you're smelling apple. But again, it's almost like a pile of apple peels or like you, where you dry them out for almost a potpourri. And then clove. We all know what clove is. Just like the, the clove bud itself or, or ground clove. Uh, this is not um, edible. This is conceptual, but with items that are typically edible. So this leans to me almost, I would say this in execution reminds me a bit of Harvest Leaves from Homeworks, which is... Again, kind of a core amazing thing that I think people heard Harvest Leaves with Homeworks and thought, oh, it'll be like leaves. No. Now the notes on Harvest Leaves uh, were spice pumpkin, mandarin, cranberry, fir balsam, and applewood. So, I mean, we're talking the cranberries in there, the apple, the, you know, there's probably some wood in here as well, because this does lean toward almost the potpourri sort of, the classic sort of what people think of like Yankee Candle, how, what they do fall, um, or your craft store you know, autumnal scent, but not in a bad way <laughs> because it really is, it's bright, it's sharp, but it's not fresh, juicy. It's dried down with, because again, the apple peel, the clove, I imagine there's some sort of, maybe some apple wood in this one I could pick out. Not full onto the balsam, but certainly like a, some dried fruit in there as well. Good depth to it. Again, a little bit tannic, almost like a like a really nice red wine is what this reminds me of a little bit as well, or like a spiced wine. Beautiful scent, would love to see how they would reimagine this one. Then we go into, oh boy, this is this is in my list of top, top, tops, though of course all of these are. One and Done, 2011, Mountain Leaves. Forget what you know about leaves, leaves, this is Mountain Leaves, and I will leave it to the label to tell you what this smells like. It is frozen leaves in like a, in a mountain, but like through the forest to get to the mountain, like, you know, the Northwest or through the Appalachians. Uh, the notes on this one, a crisp blend of fresh mountain air, lush evergreens, iced citrus, and rich vetiver. Okay, so instantly we're thinking, oh, this is almost sort of like a perfumery blend. And before I even smell it, it is just, it is, I've never smelled anything like this in the 11 years since this was launched. And it is incredible. I would, I would probably wear this. So mountain air, that's an accord. We don't know what all was built into that, but you're thinking okay, probably some greenery, probably some cool things, probably some woods, maybe some plants. Lush evergreens, okay, so you're gonna get some pines in there. Iced citrus, so some sort of citrus that's not your bright juicy, but like a frozen citrus or just like a brightness, but not tropical. And then rich vetiver, of course, we know vetiver, we talk about that a lot, that's, that's the roots of a grass. Uh, for being mountain leaves with, you know, the, the ice citrus and kind of like these frozen leaves, it's surprisingly warm. It's almost like what Bath & Body Works wishes their men's collection would be, where, you know, they they just lean kind of like, not to say they're all terrible, but like they lean a little bit more juvenile, sort of like middle school boy body spray. They just puts it on too much and they're like, get out of my face with that, <laughs> that nastiness. Uh, that not, again, not that they're all bad. I think there's some nice ones now, but they lean a little bit towards like very generic, what we think of as like a men, you know, men's colony kind of thing. That is not what this is. This is rich and warm and it is such a balance of, it's, fr it was fresh? Yeah, a, a crisp blend. It is crisp and it is fresh, but it is not fresh how we typically think of like, oh, you know, a bright balsam and some juniper and maybe something minty or, no, it is, it is a warm freshness. Um, like like some redwood or, or something in there, just like envisioning mountain leaves, but they've frozen. It's you're you're getting frost at night, but it's still it's still autumn. It's not winter, right? There's that difference. Um, evergreens, sure, but it's the woodiness. It's it's not so much like you're not getting any obvious pines or balsams or spruces or firs or anything like that. 
And the vetiver, this, there's something else that, some other bass note in this beyond the vetiver that I wish I could pick out what it is, that really creates a soft warmth to it along with the vetiver, which again is sort of earthy and rich, but not even toward, you know, not like a, a, a patchouli or, or warm like a patchouli, but not heady like the patchouli. And it's just, it's so beautiful. Uh, it really is, again, it's conceptual, it's strong, but it doesn't choke you out. And that's where Slack & Co really excelled and I think continues to excel is it can give you those powerhouses, but because they're elevated in their execution and their materials, it's going to, you're gonna welcome the strength of it versus be like, oh gosh, that's like, get it out of here. It's not, it really is, it wraps you up and it's comforting. It's like a, a warm, you know, a warm blanket or something. Love, love mountain leaves. All right. Final four, not top four, but final four. Um, and these are sort of your conceptual gourmands, I'd call them. So some of them are edibles, not entirely edible, but they really are, are a bit of gourmand with a bit of sort of like the first group was the bakery, the second group was the pure on conceptual. This is sort of a blending of the two. So first up is this came out in 2011 and it was a fan favorite, a huge hit. Bath and brings it back every year. But the reason why it's in here, again, unlike Leaves, unlike Cider Lane, unlike Autumn, they really have kind of devolved it a bit at Bath & Body Works, and that is Marshmallow Fireside. It doesn't smell the same as it used to. First of all, love this packaging. Classic 2011 Slack & Co. BW packaging cannot, in my opinion, really cannot be beat, except maybe in some instances by Homeworks. So this is the, again, the perfect photo of, it is, it's marshmallows that are melting on a stick. You've got that bright purpley orange fire in the background, Marshmallow Fireside, you're intrigued immediately as you should be. Notes are toasted marshmallows and sweet vanilla cream wrapped in the aroma of rich smoldering woods. And we know it, we love it. It is, uh, it is the perfect balance of smoldering woods. You've got probably some cedarwood in there, maybe some birch, maybe some pine, and it's a flame. I get a bit of similarity to like cranberry woods has some of those, not quite smoldering woods, but some of those dark, deep, you know, forest woods in there, but such a bright, probably a little, a line of like amber or musk or something in there that is like a sweetness and intensity a powderiness, but doesn't take it to be fully that direction, but it keeps it from being like a s'more drippy cloying vanilla pumpkin marshmallow sort of scent. But the marshmallow is, it is like the powdery marshmallow you get and it's sweet and it's starting to like burn a little bit, so you're getting like the caramelization, the immediately burnt caramelization of the toasted marshmallow. But there's a reason why it's not toasted marshmallow or s'more, it's marshmallow fireside, because it really is, it's the moment. It's not make yourself a s'mores and eat it and have s'more cereal. It's the moment where you're roasting these marshmallows and what you're smelling at that campfire. And it's just one of the most perfect executions across Slack & Co. Autumn, like in general, I think would be this one. Obviously, huge hit, done beautifully, and it just doesn't come back to Bath and Butterworks the same. It's like toned down, it's muted, it's gone from like seven or eight notes to three or four notes, and it works. If you smell them side by side, it's quite obvious the difference. If you don't know the difference or don't smell them side by side, you're like, oh yeah, that's Marshmallow Fireside. But it's kind of like, okay, are you buying the original parfum from the fragrance house that created it? Or are you buying like the department store dupe of it? And it's like, Okay, it works, but it's not, it's just not the same. And that's not the same as this, incredible. Would love to see Slack & Co reimagine and relaunch a version of that. Then we go to, this is actually the best fall scent of all time. Fight me, Pumpkin Patch. Whew. Bath & Body Works, not to hate on them, but why they're a trip to me is they push sweet cinnamon pumpkin constantly. And I, I know many people love it. And if you love it, I don't judge you for it but I do not like that candle. I think, or the, every form it comes in. I've maybe purchased it once ever. It's just heavy on an artificial spice cinnamon. And I love cinnamon. You can put cinnamon in anything, I love it. And it's just like artificial cinnamon, which is hard. I mean, hard, I don't know why it smells artificial, but it does to me. I just don't like it. This is a true pumpkin in that, uh, first of all, it's come out, it was a pumpkin patch. And then it was pumpkin patch for a while, and then it was like heirloom pumpkin, and then pumpkin carving, and then it didn't come out for quite a few years. This past year, it did come back almost as good as this. The notes have changed, they've tweaked it. You know, sometimes they act like it's more like a pumpkin pie, like a gourmand bakery. Sometimes they, I think now the marketing department of Bath Butter just doesn't know what to do with it, is how to, how to market it, because it really is, it is a pumpkin patch is the best name for it, because uh, pumpkin carving is 
fine, I suppose, because it is like the raw pumpkin flesh with a bit of foodie items mixed in, but it's not pumpkin pie, it's not a dessert item. Notes on this one, an invitingly warm blend of fresh pumpkin, spicy cinnamon, creamy nutmeg, whipped butter, and brown sugar. Now to me, it's almost like the pumpkin, the, the spice is like almost all those ingredients, except suppose I suppose like the butter or the sugar, make this almost like if you were, not that you do like a puree, but like if you were scenting your home, you know, if you had a pot of water and you put in like lemon, lemon peel and some black pepper and some rosemary, okay, you're not doing that. Those are all edible things. You're not making like a soup to eat it. You're just scenting your home with that. Um, that's kind of what pumpkin patch is for me. It doesn't specifically smell edible, though it, I mean, I suppose it could, but it's just, I almost don't think of it as an edible one because it's not the pumpkin creme that, that they do now or pumpkin pie. It doesn't have a bakery. You know, there's no um, baked good crust in there or anything like that as far as bakery goes. It, you, the pumpkin, the gourd really, really shines in this. Like to me, this is, you're, you're mostly getting like the pumpkin flesh with a, something that softens it, maybe some nutmeg. If it's cinnamon, it's like a soft Mexican sale on cinnamon. It's not a spicy red hot cinnamon at all. This is tied in my like, top three of the best uh, fall autumnal scents of all time. Love it um, and would love to see. I mean, Homeworks has had a, a number of pumpkins. There was one I really loved. I forget, I think it was Autumn Pumpkin. It was the, the one that came in the burlap pumpkin figural. Love that pumpkin. A couple of the pumpkins, were not favorites of mine. That one was really good. It reminded me somewhat of pumpkin patch. Final two, roasted pumpkin butter. So this is from that failed test collection of five. I believe it might have come out in that first year and then maybe one other time and that's probably it. I will say right off the bat, a lot of people say that this is peanut butter. It's not pumpkin butter. I fully disagree with you. If you're someone who eats pumpkin seeds or cooks them a lot, um, like I, I cook a lot of Mexican food and in Mexican food a lot of times they will have raw pumpkins or pepitas um, for like, if you're making a mole or if you're making many different kinds of sauces or if you're making salsas, raw, cooked, whatever, uh, pepitas or pumpkin seeds are going to be in there, sometimes toasted, sometimes raw, whatever. That is absolutely what what is in here. Um, so pumpkin butter, not like apple butter, which is just a really condensed, almost like applesauce cooked down until it gets even darker, more caramelized and it's delicious, um, but not, to me, not so much the pumpkin flesh, more so the pumpkin seeds, like the nuttiness. And I think that's why people say peanut butter is because the nuttiness, that's my rant, whatever. Notes on this one though. The scent of a fall treat from the local farmer's market, whipped pumpkin, toasted cinnamon, and creamy vanilla butter. Uh, I think the notes are a little strange for me. So they're saying it's butter, like, like a compound butter where you've got some cinnamon and some vanilla in it. Sure, that's delicious. Um, toasted cinnamon and whipped pumpkin. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I will say, it's interesting because like, okay, whipped pumpkin, um, I could get that again, sort of like your pumpkin, almost like batter for like pumpkin whoopie pies or something like that, but not as sweet. It's, it's sort of like a very authentic, and subdued, kind of like some of what you get from vanilla pumpkin marshmallow, but not as artificially fake, like faux sweet, more like if you actually smelled a case of like whoopie pies, but with like literally like pumpkin seeds on them um, or like ground pumpkin seeds mixed into like to make almost the flour to make like a pumpkin whoopie pie. Um, with a bit of creaminess in the middle, but not overly sweet cream. It's again, like a lot of, like the farm apple cookie, um, there's a freshness to this. Um, I could see this almost leaning toward a bakery item. Almost, you'd almost want to eat it, but to me, it's still a little bit more conceptual than that. But it's warm, it's comforting. And again, you get some of that authentic pumpkin in there, but to me, very much the pumpkin seeds as well, which I love the nuttiness that comes from that. To me, it's not peanuts, it's not peanut butter. But again, ground up pumpkin seeds, you can eat it like peanut butter practically. So I can see why people say that. And just very, the spice is very subtle, very, the toasted cinnamon, it's, I, I love this because there's so many forms of cinnamon in these candles and none of them are red hot, none of them are spicy, none of them are, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't do, I don't like cinnamon, I don't like red hot cinnamon. Doesn't exist. Like across this collection, there's no red hot cinnamon. 
warm, rich, beautiful scent. Would love to see what they do if they were to reimagine that. And then finally, this, I guess, might be my all-time favorite. Hard to say. Lavender Caramel. So there's a lot of things weird about this candle and wrong with this candle. And so many things right. Um, so Lavender Caramel. It was failed test scent. It then came out as Lavender Macaroon, though these are clearly macarons. This is before America was educated on the difference between a coconut macaroon, as we can see here. Get into it, know what it is. It's like sweetened condensed milk, shredded sweetened coconut, made into cookie form. Fine. Macaron, a French patisserie item made out of almond flour. It's a delicate cookie, usually has a little filling. They're very popular now. Most people know macaron, they know what it is. 2011 this came out, macaroon, macaron, people didn't know the difference, they couldn't talk about it. Anyhow, they were trying to go for macaron, but, and it was called lavender caramel, and then it failed, came out in like a Parisian collection, there were, there were three scents that didn't make it to market, but then then rebranded in the Parisian marketing and then they were there, but then it came out in little, those little tiny single wicks they had for a while, like the one point something ounces. Notes, an unexpected blend of lavender, warm caramel, and brown sugar with just a touch of salt, weird. Just weird. And they, when they launched it as this test scent, of course they called it lavender caramel because, I mean, what could have you called it? It was so strange. Oh my gosh. It, it is honestly almost indescribable, which I can see. I'm surprised they they were allowed to make it because I, as if I were a marketer, I would be like, I don't know what to do with this. It's incredible, but I don't know what to do. Is it bakery? Is it? It's because with there should be almonds if it's if it's macarons. It does smell like a bakery item. Um, the lavender is very soft, not the focal point. The caramel and brown sugar, like a salted caramel. I mean, not like the caramel that you're used to in wax that's thick, drippy, cloying sugar bombs. It's very subtle as if there's like a like a burnt caramel, like almost like a an acquired taste kind of burnt caramel as a thin, thin part of the filling here is where the caramel is. Like it's it's a burnt sugar. It's not a gloopy, you know, sugar daddy. And there's there's something herbal about this beyond the lavender. Um, like I know that when, when, when I first sniffed this, it was like, there is sage in here. And so it really is, it is, it's soft lavender. It's burnt caramel. It's perhaps a bit of, I suppose, an almond flour sort of macaron patisserie item but also with an earthiness of clean, fresh sage. So it's weird, but it somehow all works. And think about it. If you go into any shop that sells macarons, you're going to get, you know, a, a, a green tea and basil macaron. You're going to get so many types that are mixing botanicals and things that you don't only think of as being in bakery items. A sage burnt caramel, a sage lavender burnt caramel Macaron, I'm sure it exists, and this is kind of what it would smell like. And it's it's just so nice. It's it's weird, but it's it's kind of weird where you just want to keep burning and keep sniffing it. So that is my marathon uh in-depth from the vault haulage here of the Slacking Co. from the Vault. Harry, bring them back. I'd love to hear what you all think. Are there ones in here that you're like, yes, please bring them back? Are there ones you've never heard of, you've never seen that you're now interested in, you're intrigued? Let Harry know. Tell him to reimagine, relaunch it. So would love to hear what you think. Um, keep keep tuned. So we've done the four seasons. We've done the, the winter holiday. We did spring. We did summer. We've done our fall autumnal. And the last one uh, that will be coming is sort of the year-round sense. So it's going to be a mixture of some of the spa stuff, some of the conceptual stuff, some of the aromatherapy stuff, things that don't necessarily have a specific season when you have to burn them, but they're in some ways just as good or better than some of these scents and are ones that needs to reimagine and bring back. So that is it for now. Thank you so much for sticking around. Let me know if you made it to the end of this video. You are just as crazy as I am. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care.